So if you've just bagged yourself Samsung's new Galaxy S10, S10e or S10 Plus smartphone, you'll definitely want to run through of some of the best features hidden away on there. After all, Samsung has added tons of bonus bits on top of Android Pie, so these things are denser than the entire cast of The Only Way is Essex. So what are the best features squirreled away in Samsung's new S10 series handsets? Well, here's our run through of our top 15 favourite features that you should definitely get to grips with as soon as you grab this phone. And don't forget for more on the latest grips mobile tech to plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So the first thing you'll probably want to do with your new Galaxy S10 smartphone is copy over all your old contacts, messages, apps and other bits from your old handset. Luckily this is nice and easy thanks to Samsung's Smart Switch app. All you want to do is dive into your app straight, head to the Samsung folder and select Smart Switch. The app will probably need to update and once that's done just tap receive data. You can either connect to your old phone using a cable or wirelessly over Wi-Fi. And the good news is that a wide range of devices are supported here as well. Even if you're on an old Windows phone or a Blackberry device you'll be able to copy over your stuff no worries. Basically just follow the instructions and you can't go wrong. Next up we highly recommend downloading a wallpaper that masks that pinhole camera up in the top corner. As you can see here pretty much any anime wallpaper works quite well thanks to those big staring eyes. Or you can simply do a Google image search for Galaxy S10 wallpapers, bearing in mind that of course the S10 Plus has different wallpapers as it's a dual lens front facer. And once you've decided on an image, the quickest way of sending it as your wallpaper is just to dive into Samsung's gallery and then go to downloads, select the image and then in this top right corner you'll have a set as wallpaper option. If it's an image that's not actually set up as a Galaxy S10 wallpaper, you will have to do a little bit of uh, manual resizing and reshifting to get it just right. And then once that's done, just hit set as wallpaper and boom, job done. Now the Exynos S10 models don't have the best battery life, so it's definitely good to know exactly where you stand at any one point in terms of battery percentage remaining. But you will actually have to add this to the status bar, otherwise you'll have to just constantly check it manually. So what you wanna do is dive into the Galaxy S10 settings and go to notifications, and then the option is in status bar. As you can see there, show battery percentage. Just make sure that little switch is ticked as you can see, the percentage will appear up top. Now this here S10e is rather compact and fairly easy to use one-handed, although it's still a bit of a struggle to get all the way up to that notifications bar. And of course, if you chose the S10 or the S10 Plus, then you're basically stuffed. Or are you? Well, actually, the good news is that Samsung has added in its own one-handed mode, which you'll find in the advanced features in the settings menu. Just scroll down to motions and gestures, and in there you'll find the one-handed mode. This is deactivated by default, so just flip this little switch in order to turn it on. And then you've got a choice of either gesture controls or button. In swipe mode, what you'll need to do is flick your thumb very quickly up from the bottom corner of the screen, and as you can see, everything just minimizes down, so it's then much easier to use everything one-handed. This works on either corner as well, depending on which hand you actually use to hold the smartphone. If you struggle with the gesture feature, then we definitely recommend switching to the button mode instead. What you'll need to do with this mode activated is just triple tap that home button, and as you can see, it does the same thing. Nice and easy. While we're on the subject of that navigation dock though, there is a way of customising it and you can actually ditch it entirely and replace it with motion gestures instead, which we actually recommend doing because it's rather good. To play around with the navigation dock, what you'll need to do is dive into the settings and then head to the display section. And in there, you will find the navigation bar option. You can quickly just customise the order that the buttons are arranging, or of course you can replace them entirely with the full screen gestures. Unfortunately, if you do have the button mode set up for the one-handed mode, you will have to replace this with the gesture mode because of course that navigation dock will be gone. In this mode, what you can do is go back at any time with a quick swipe on the left side of the screen, head back to your desktops with a swipe in the middle, and bring up the recent apps with a swipe on the right. You get used to it pretty quickly and it does work very well indeed. It helps at first to have the little gesture hints down below if you need to know exactly where you need to be swiping up from but once you're used to it you can just get rid of that and boom it's a nice seamless experience. Now the fingerprint sensor tech on the S10 and the S10 Plus is absolutely fantastic. The built-in ultrasonic scanner is very very highly accurate. It can actually map out the ridges on your fingers uh, which makes it a lot harder to fool and also a lot more accurate when for instance your fingers are a bit oily or a bit wet. Unfortunately in the S10e it's an edge mounted sensor, it's a little bit more awkwardly positioned, it's not quite as funky of course. All the same, the fingerprint sensor tech works the charm on all of these S10 smartphones and it can be set up in the biometrics and security section. We definitely recommend setting up your fingerprint for fast access but what you should also do is set up the face recognition too. Admittedly, this method of unlocking isn't quite as secure as the fingerprint sensor, but it is great if you can't use your hands. So for instance, you're working in the kitchen uh, and your hands are all greasy or you're wearing gloves, something like that. 
If you're worried about the security aspect, you can simply knock off the faster recognition feature. And we also recommend knocking off the stay on lock screen as well. So as soon as your face is recognized, you're straight into your desktops. And with that raise to wake feature enabled, all you basically need to do is just pick up your smartphone, it'll immediately scan your mug and boom, you're straight into your desktops. Now, great news if you like a bit of a blast on PUBG Mobile or some other Android based games, because Samsung has added in its own game tools feature. You can access this in a couple of different ways. If you've got that navigation dock down below, then you'll notice the game tools icon right there in the bottom corner. Alternatively, you can drag down the notifications bar and you'll see a show games tools option in there. Now the game tools adds all kinds of great bonus features that really does help to enhance your game and experience. So for instance, you can block any of those pesky calls and notifications so you're not disrupted and distracted. And you can also record your fragging session as well, so you can share it online, all the best bits where you blow your mate's head off from 100 yards away. And if you dive into the settings, you can actually change the format that you record in and whether you use the built-in microphone or just record the game's audio instead. For maximum taunting, definitely good to go with the mic. Now, one feature found on all three Galaxy S10 smartphones that's particularly handy if you've bagged yourself a pair of the Galaxy Buds is the wireless power share feature. Now, you'll find this feature hidden away in that notifications panel buried amongst the other icons. It is deactivated by default, so to turn it on, you just need to tap that little icon. And with that done, what you can then do is place your Galaxy Buds case on the back of the Galaxy S10, and as you can see, they will start charging. So what you're basically doing is just sharing your S10's battery power with another device using that reverse wireless charging. So that's great news if your buds run out of juice halfway through the day, or for instance, if you just leave your S10 plugged in overnight to charge up, you can just stick your buds on top and they will also charge as well with just the need for one cable. Now one classic Samsung Galaxy feature that makes a return on the S10 series is the edge screen. It's even found here on the S10e, even though technically it doesn't have that same edge finish. The edge screen is activated by default. All you need to do to bring it into play is just swipe your finger from the right edge of the screen like so. In its default state, it will give you fast access to your favorite apps. You can actually edit which apps appear in it if you so desire. However, we found it's far more useful if you tap this little cog icon and try customizing it to suit your own particular needs. So for instance, you can set up shortcuts to your favorite people instead, or various features that you might find really, really useful, such as the ability to take screenshots, that sort of thing. You can even set up the edge display so it brings up a little widget like the weather instead. Now, if you have a small, annoying child, chances are you're in the habit of bugging them your smartphone to let them watch a video or play a game and basically just shut them the hell up. And if that's the case, you're probably a bit paranoid about what they actually get up to on that mobile while you're not actively staring at the screen. Well, fear ye not, because there is a kids mode to help out. You can find this hidden away amongst those notification icons, kids home with a nice big smiley face of the smug little git. Just give that a little tap and you'll be able to get it all set up. The kid space is exactly what it sounds like. It's just a kid-friendly environment with limited access to a handful of pre-approved apps. You will, of course, need to download these apps the first time you enter the kid space in order for them to actually work. As you can see, you've got a handful of games, you've got a kid-safe browser, and they do have access to the camera as well if they want to take some photos of the dog's arse or whatever. It's good, clean fun for kids of all ages, and we definitely recommend it just for peace of mind. And don't worry, there's no way for them to exit out of that kid space without actually knowing your own personal pin. So as long as you're not dumb slash drunk enough to tell them that in a fit of weakness, then you're gonna be all right. Now we're big fans of Samsung's camera app, but my God, there are a lot of mods in there, which can be quite clunky when you're trying to find exactly the one that you want. Thankfully, there is an easy way of culling any mods that you never really use, like this stupid food mode. All you need to do is dive into the camera settings, scroll down to the bottom, and you'll find the camera modes option. Tap your way into edit modes, and then just get rid of any gumph that you don't use. And then when you head back into the camera app, you'll see it's a lot more streamlined. Ah, lovely stuff. Now, another feature that's hidden away that's actually pretty decent is the Bigsby routines. You'll find this by heading into the S10 settings and then head into the advanced features. And you'll find the Bigsby routines option right there at the top. Just give that a little tappy tap and it'll be activated. Now, what Bigsby routines allows you to do is basically just set up a lot of automatic routines for your smartphone. And some of them are really, really helpful. So for instance, you go into the save battery at night, tap this little pen icon in order to actually edit it. You can then have it turn off a lot of battery sapping features such as the always on display, Bluetooth, location services, Wi-Fi, stuff that you won't actually be using. There are all kinds of different if routines that you can set as well. So for instance, instead of the time thing, you could set up the charging status to charging because presumably you'll be charging your Galaxy S10 smartphone at night. You can also set up a driving routine which can actually read your notifications out loud. And uh, the way you can get this set up is by basically saying if it's connected to your 
cause Bluetooth. And you can also set up Bigsby routines so they are manually activated as well. So for instance, we've got a meeting routine set up that just silences the phone and you set up a little shortcut to that on the desktop to activate it when you absolutely need to. There are so many possible uses for Bigsby routines. We definitely recommend having a bit of a flick through and seeing if there's anything in there could help you with your everyday existence. Now, if you have any smart connected devices scattered about your home, then it's really easy to control them from one hub, the Galaxy S10 smartphone. And the way to do this is by diving into the apps tray, head to that Samsung section, and there's something in there called Smart Things. It's dead easy to get started with Samsung Smart Things. As you might imagine, all you need to do is hit Add Device. And as you can see, there's support for a wide range of appliances. Not all of the big brands are in there, but most of the major names will be found in there. I've got some Lifex lights, so just gonna give that a tap. So I've just signed into my Lifex account. It's automatically detected all of the bulbs that I've set up around the home, and now it's just a case of tap and boom. Now one feature that we find particularly handy on the Galaxy S10 series if you're constantly checking your notifications is that always on display. It means you can see at a quick glance whether you've got anything waiting for your attention instead of having to constantly unlock the smartphone. Now, of course this is deactivated by default presumably to save on that battery power but you can activate it quickly and easily simply by diving into the settings and then going to the lock screen section. Just give that little switch a tap next to always on display and you'll activate it and you can also fully customize it by diving on in there. The default option is tap to show but we like having it showing constantly. You can also schedule it so it turns off for instance at night. And if you want to change the look of the clock as well just dive into clock style and then always on display and you can have a play around with different options to see which one you like the best. You can even add your own gifts and stuff if you want something to cheer you up. And the last feature on Samsung's Galaxy S10 smartphones that we rather like is another classic that we've found on a few generations now. Once again, dive into that Samsung folder and you will find the Samsung Health app. Once you've agreed to the many, many, many terms and conditions and policies and such forth and such forth, you will then be able to dive on in and it will start tracking your motions. Samsung Health is definitely aimed at the more casual fitness enthusiast and it's got quite a nice easy setup as you can see. You can see exactly how many steps you've taken that day, your active time. You can track exercise and any food that you consume as well. And you can also record how much water you've drunk if you're really that anal. It's all pretty straightforward motivational stuff. You can even hook up with other Samsung Health users as well to challenge each other to basically get off your lazy asses and do something. So that right there is our rundown of the 15 best features that you'll find buried away in the Samsung Galaxy S10, S10e and S10 Plus. If you've got any top tips of your own, definitely let us know in the comments down below. And don't forget to poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech. Cheers everyone, love you.